Um, I now move to our final speech of the night into Trey Gowdy. Trey Gowdy, the number one New York Times bestselling author of Doesn't Hurt to Ask and co-author of Unify with Senator Tim Scott. He is the host of Sunday Night in America with Trey Gowdy on Fox News and the Trey Gowdy podcast. Gowdy served as four-time congressman from South Carolina. You have the ears of the House tonight. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Madam President, and thank each of you for your uh, hospitality. Uh, the motion, uh, this House would vote blue no matter who, that's actually two separate motions. And with your indulgence, I want to bifurcate them. I think they're worthy. Both of those clauses are worthy of your attention. And I'm going to admit to you up front, what I say initially will not be popular. That does not mean it's not fair, and it doesn't mean it's not accurate. But I'm going to warn you up front, it's not popular. What I hope to do at the end is give us something that we can coalesce around. So the motion, the first part, this House would vote blue. Somebody's already suggested that. Four years ago, the House went blue. And then two years ago, the Senate and the White House. Total control. Every gear of government. No need to seek compromise. No need to work across the aisle. Every gear of government was blue. The whole town was blue. Not just the House. The whole town was blue. So far, what I have said is unassailable. The whole town is blue. The House, the Senate, and the White House. So I think it is fair for you to ask yourself, what has that gotten you? And to be fair, history has been made. Inflation is historically high. Gas prices have doubled. Crime, which is the most insidious tax of all on people who can least afford to pay it, is high. The supply chain is rattled. The Inflation Reduction Act didn't reduce anything except your purchasing power. So what domestic indicator is better than it was before you decided to paint the entire town blue? Not just the house, the whole town. Every gear of government with total control comes full responsibility. That's stateside. Now let's look at the world stage. Russia invaded Eastern Europe where it remains. And, and keep in mind what you were told. It's time to let the grown-ups, the most experienced person to ever run for president, let's let the grown-ups handle foreign policy. Let's let the sober-minded people handle foreign policy. What has that gotten you? Russia is in Eastern Europe. Iran is closer than ever to a nuclear bomb. North Korea continues to act badly. Relations with China are colder than they have ever been. And that's not even the worst foreign policy disaster. That is reserved for Afghanistan, where we made promises. We made promises to people who helped us there. Yeah, there was bipartisan support to leave Afghanistan. I concede you that. There was no support, bipartisan or otherwise, to leave Americans behind, to leave allies behind. What we left behind after 20 years of blood from our brothers and sisters is a country where rape victims are stoned and people are beheaded because of their religious differences. Those are things we can measure. How about the things we cannot measure? Americans are nothing if not hopeful. Tomorrow will be better. It is morning in America, except now. 80% of Americans believe that we are not only headed in the wrong direction, we're on the wrong track. How do you accomplish that? How are you both headed in the wrong direction and on the wrong track? More Americans than ever believe that political violence is unavoidable. So I ask you, you voted blue. This house went blue. The Senate went blue. The whole town was painted blue. Give me some marker of how you are better off because of what you've done. And let me say this. We've had primetime hearings. They came two years too late, but there were primetime hearings. Where, were the prime, where are the primetime hearings on COVID and what it did to students? Where are the primetime hearings on crime? Where are the primetime hearings on gas prices? These are not partisan issues. It doesn't matter what your political orthodoxy is. These are domestic. These are everyday issues. How are you better off? 
And as I said, I warned you, it would be wildly unpopular. This is the information that I want to share with you. The second part of this motion. And they have to prove both. It's their motion to prove. This house would vote blue no matter who. I found it instructive that my good friend, Secretary Johnson, went through a list of Republicans that he thought had done noble things, and I could not help but resist the thought that he would not vote for a single one of them, and he's asking you not to do it. He listed way less than 1% of the Republicans that have run for office in the last couple of years. I wonder how many mayor candidates you can name. I wonder how many gubernatorial candidates you can name. I wonder how many of you would go to my home, my beloved home state of South Carolina, and vote against Tim Scott, who did not deny the election results. Can you name the Republican senators who voted to certify the election? I'm not asking you to vote Republican. It was early on in the evening where I realized I would not be able to carry that burden of persuasion. I am not asking you to do that. What I'm asking you to do is to reject. Would you vote blue if the motion said no matter what? Would you vote blue if the motion said no matter why? Because the what and the why are subsumed within the who. I mean, what if I walked in here and said, vote red no matter what? You would laugh me out of this place, as you should. What if I were to stand up and say, vote for this person based on their religion? What would your reaction be? Vote for this person based on their race. What would your reaction be? Vote for this person based on their gender. What would your reaction be? Your reaction would be, well, Trey, what about competence? What about experience? What about character? What about ideas? <laughs> I am doing all I can to share all the information I can, and then if I have time, God willing, I'm going to answer every question there is. But this is important, and I'll tell you why it's important. I'll tell you why it's important. Because what you're being asked to do is say, we don't need to analyze all those candidates that Secretary Johnson just mentioned, all of what he calls the good Republicans. Now, what I want you to ask yourself is, how many candidates for Congress can you name? How many candidates for the United States Senate? How many of them voted to certify the election results? That's a big issue tonight. How many gubernatorial candidates on the Republican side can you name? And yet you are prepared to walk out of here and say, I'm not even going to investigate their positions. I'm going to vote blue no matter who. Look, you can argue that ours is a democracy in decline. You can argue that. I'm an American. I can say that. How does it advance the principles of a, of a participatory democracy for you to eliminate every single factor except political color? So if that placard said, vote blue because, I would say have at it. And many of you who have risen and many of you who have questions and points of information for me want to give a reason. That's fine. If you would vote blue because, then you should reject the blue no matter who. But that's what you're being asked to do. So I would ask you, I promise you, I am going to come, but when you get to be as old as I am, it, you just forget so many things, I got to get them off my chest, and then I'm going to do my best to duck and dodge your questions. I promise you. What I'm asking you to do is consider this motion as it is before you. Blue, no matter who, no matter what, no matter why, no matter when. Is that what we've become? That we don't need to hear from the candidates, we just need a color chart. Is that what we've become? If you agree with me that that is not what we've become, I'm not asking you to vote red. 
You are welcome to vote blue all you want to. Just make it because, not because of party label. That's all I'm asking you to do. Now, God willing, I have... God willing, I have run out of time. <laughs> to all of my friends that I gave short shrift to while I was talking, my apologies, and may we begin. <laughs> I, I don't know who to call on, Madam President, just at whatever order I want. All right. She abstains. I think I heard the first participation from over here, and then I promise I'll come over here. No, I now look. Re refresh my recollection. I don't think Russia. I, a couple of points. It was a long flight from Charlotte. A unless unless I miss something, President Trump is not on the ballot. I've heard his name more than any mayor candidate, any congressional candidate, any gubernatorial candidate. I've heard the name of somebody who's not on the ballot. Your point's well taken. Think about the impeachment on that call, on the way they took Did they handle that? I mean, they couldn't get a single Republican vote to indict. Not a single one to indict. Democrats voted not to indict. So you're doing exactly what I'm asking you to do. You're voting blue because. All I'm asking you to do is don't vote blue no matter what. Just, that's all I'm asking you to do. You have a reason. That's good enough for me. Just don't do it because. <laughs> I have done something terribly wrong to have this much interest in what I have said. So, yes, ma'am. Hey, um, my point is I'm at St. Edmunds. Um, and my point of information Can I? Well, could I respectfully have a point of information for you, or is that outside protocol? Of course, yes. Yes. I, all I want to know is what specifically Tim Scott has done to make it where you would not even consider voting for him. I, I, I want to be very clear. I want to be very clear. I want to be very clear on what I heard, and then I want you to hear whatever you think is fair to have heard. I heard Donald Trump's name, who is not on the ballot. I heard Joe Biden, whose name is not on the ballot. I heard Hillary Clinton, and I heard Mick Mulvaney. What I did not hear is Brad Raffensperger, who is the Secretary of State in Georgia, who is a Republican, who voted, who voted and risked his political career to say there was no election fraud, and yet this motion would have you vote no on Brad Raffensperger simply because of the party label he runs under. I just think we're better than that. And I have been, at least y'all are nice about it. You said, please conclude. Thank y'all very much. This was wonderful. Thank you.